The next thing that I'll talk about is the custom actions and then kind of turning those into messages and all that stuff. So let's head over to voice flow. I'll go back to my dashboard and I'll get rid of this stuff and personal and custom action demo. Yes. Okay, so this is uh, this is actually, if you go to demo React Chat and take a look at the VF file that's in there, our example project VF file, this demo, uh, this custom action demo project is the project that I generate that VF file from. So if you've you know used that or imported that before, this should be maybe sort of familiar to you. Um, but I've basically just been continuing to build off of this project as I add more and more examples into that demo React Chat project. Um, so the thing that I wanted to show off here is basically just the, the custom actions portion of this. So this is the main way right now that we're doing any kind of customization in our uh, in our web chat, where you'll be going in, you'll be uh, adding a custom action in your voice flow project. And then that is basically your way of telling your React chat, hey, I want to now maybe show this experience or switch to this mode, depending on if you're doing just kind of like a one shot custom action or one that actually stops. Um, so if I go to something like, you know, what's a good example of this? I guess the booking an appointment one, which is the one that brings up the the little calendar. Um, so I'll I'll kind of skip over the basics of how this uh, how my whole voice flow project is set up, but very simply, I have just you know this topic for maybe the services that my 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 voice flow project offers, my my bot offers. Um, I'm going to have an intent for, you know, the specific thing that I want to capture. So in this case, book calendar. And if I take a look at that, I can see I've got a couple of utterances here, schedule a meeting, book a meeting, various things like that. No required entities for this one. So I'm just going to say something like that. My existence is going to go great. It's going to show me the calendar and then I can choose my date and I'll go forward from that. So here uh, on the calendar, I've got a couple of paths here. We've got done and we have cancel. Um, so these are basically just two options that I can pass back to say, hey, I either want to move down this path now, or I want to move down this other path. And then we have stop on action. So in this case, we want to wait until the user has finished interacting with our calendar in some way. And then once that interaction is complete, we will get a response that is either done or cancel. And based on that, we can continue down the appropriate path. Uh, there's no, uh, oh, there is an action body for this one. We have a, a today's date. Can't remember if I'm actually consuming this. I guess we can take a look inside the uh, the demo to see what we're doing with that. Um, but you can basically pass anything here. I'm typically using this just as a JSON uh, body because then you can really easily parse this into something uh, in your JavaScript, in your React chat, just by using json.parse. If this was some other kind of format, then maybe you'd need a library or maybe you'd need some string parsing in order to actually uh, transform it. But if you do have a really simple value, I could technically just have this be you know, the numeric value. And now I take the string that I know is to be a number and I cast it to a number. And that's a pretty simple way of doing it as well. But especially if you expect multiple properties to be passed here, you know, configuration options and the like, doing this as a JSON object is probably your best bet. Um, Great, so I've got this uh, little piece set up here, and then let's take a look at what I'm actually doing with that in demo React chat land. Uh, so let's close this guy. And we're taking a look at the demo React chat. And let's take a look at our traces. So I guess I can kind of talk a little bit about this uh, trace system that I set up here in the demo, because we don't really have an, an equivalent of this um, in our actual code base uh, in the React chat code base. I think, is this where the traces are being passed? Yes, we're passing them all here. Okay, cool. So uh, basically we have the use runtime hook. I guess this is one kind of important part of how the, uh, of what is exposed by the React chat library. So we have all those components, which are all for the most part, fairly dumb components in the sense that they don't have a lot of logic that they are responsible for. You know, they're just there to be composed together into this larger shape. And other than that, a lot of the logic is kind of um, decoupled from the components themselves. Where does a lot of that logic live? In the use runtime hook, of course. So use runtime, I won't go into kind of the full complexity of it, but you can basically just think about this as a React hook that wraps all of the functionality for interacting with and managing state for your conversation. So ideally you just need to use runtime somewhere in your project. Uh, you know, it's done for you if you're using, you know, React Chat or Demo React Chat, but somewhere there needs to be use runtime set up. 
which is where you pass all of your configuration, you know, your API keys, all that stuff potentially. And you get back your runtime instance, which then has things like, you know, your current session on it, the turns in that session, which is basically, you know, system said this thing, user said that thing back and forth um, that make up the messages. All that stuff is contained within the runtime um, callbacks in order to advance your conversation to send interactions. All that stuff is within the runtime. Um, so when we're building that runtime, when we were setting up the use runtime hook, we're passing in all of these traces as an array. And these are basically us capturing some custom action. That's what a trace is responsible for. It's for taking some kind of incoming uh, request of some type, a custom action type, and doing something with it. So it's not even to the extent of necessarily turning it into its own message or anything like that. It's really just a callback that will be hit when your uh, when that a custom action of that appropriate type comes through. So let's just take a look at our calendar trace to see how this works. Well, very simply, we have these two kind of methods on here. We have can handle. So this is just a predicate to determine a, a test to determine can this trace be used to handle this incoming message. So all we're doing here is checking to see if the type of the incoming trace is our type that we expect for our custom action. So if I look at my custom action, here we have the name calendar. And we're using that exact same name as the type here. So this is a trace that will handle our calendar type uh, custom actions. Um, and then you can see here, we are actually taking that and pushing a custom message with that, but we technically don't need to do anything here, right? Like if you're sending a custom action, you receive it. This can technically be a way of you doing kind of like an eventing system almost, right? Where that custom action is received. Now, great. You can do something in reaction to that, in response to that outside of just manipulating the state of your conversation. Um, so I could do something here, like have an alert that says, you know, uh, calendar request pending or something like that. Um, let's just run this with our yarn dev command, open up the conversation and then, oh man, this is still just in the way every single time. Um, now I'll move it up here. Cool. So I pop this open. And I'm going to say book and appointment. Great. So now I've got an alert popping up saying there's a calendar request pending. So I didn't even necessarily change the state of my conversation or anything. I just caused some side effect to happen. So this is where you can really do almost anything with this side effect. If you want this to affect some state of your website, if you want it to show a toast notification, if you want it to change the size of your uh, window that your React chat is showing up in, you know, you can really do anything here because it's a, you know, just a callback that allows you to kind of integrate with whatever system you want. However, in most cases, you won't just want to send something. You probably want to show a message or, or you know, change the state of the conversation in some way. And so that's where something like uh, changing this context that you're provided can come into play. So here in this example, I've just changed it back. We're now taking the uh, trace that we received. So this is going to have all that information from our custom action. Specifically, it's going to have this payload property, which has our JSON object in it that we wrote, wrote out. Um, so that's why we're parsing that into an actual object from a JSON string. And then we're pushing a message of this type with our custom message calendar. So this kind of custom message system I'll get into in a second. But let's just show like a really simple example of this again, where instead we'll make this a text message and then the text will just be the trace payload. Uh, whoops, payload. So we'll just make sure that our payload is coming through okay. And then we can actually set up a custom action or a custom message type to, uh, to handle that. So here, what we're doing is we have this context that has been passed into us. So this is basically the state of the conversation that we're allowed to mutate during this, the course of this, like handling of this trace. Um, so by taking the messages here and then pushing in a new message type, we'll add that message in. And now that can be rendered and shown in our conversation. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If I go back here, um, uh, book and appointment. So now we should see when would you like to visit next? And here we go. There's the payload that we passed in our custom action in voice flow. So let's now kind of upgrade this one last time from the 
version where we're showing this text message to where we're showing a custom message type and kind of talk about how that custom message type works. Um, so our type property that we have here in the like messages array that we're pushing to has this special handling basically for strings that start with custom underscore. So this is basically kind of our back door of, hey, if your message type is this, then we'll allow any payload type because we really we don't know what someone might put in their custom action and what they might want to make as a custom message. Um, so this is our kind of way of handling it. So the way that you might opt into creating a new custom message is uh, doesn't have to be necessarily an enumerator, but we're using one just to kind of keep everything well maintained and organized. Is you're going to add some kind of a custom message type. So let's call this one, uh, you know, other or foo or something like that. So we'll say this is custom underscore foo and let's change our uh change our trace to use that so now this is custom message type foo you'll notice if i don't follow the correct like uh, prefix um, as per the types then it will actually complain here so if i try you know foo that's no good but if i do custom foo then that's fine so again, make sure that you're you know using that custom prefix just to indicate that this is a special custom message type. And then again, the payload can be anything. In this case, I'm parsing the JSON object and passing that as or the JSON payload and passing that in as an actual object. Um, but you could potentially you know do anything you want here. Um, but just this on its own isn't going to do anything because now if I come back here again, book and appointment. When would you like to visit next? <clears throat> Great. And I end up with now just kind of an empty message essentially printed because I have no way of rendering this message. I don't know how to handle this custom foo type. What do I need to do in order to handle it? Well, that's where we're going to head over to the demo TSX and we need to set up basically something in this match statement. Um, so this is where we're taking in the current message and saying, hey, if it's this type, if it's this custom calendar type, we'll render it with this component. If it's this video type, we'll render it with this other component. So I'm basically going to do the same thing with my custom calendar. I'm just going to swap that to foo. And we're grabbing the, uh, let me see if I can let me get rid of some of this other visual noise here. Um, but basically, we're grabbing the today um, field from the payload that was passed to us. And we're rendering this calendar message, which is a kind of custom component I've defined here, which is pretty simple. Um, it basically just renders a uh, calendar from React Calendar, and it uh, interacts with the kind of fetch state here in order to make some changes. Um, and does this interact call with the kind of done type at the end? So as I was calling out before, for a custom action that you're stopping on, you'll need to explicitly send it one of these paths in order for it to kind of continue down that path once you know the interaction with the user is done so the way to do that is the kind of runtime um the object which is returned from our use runtime hook which in our case we put into a context then pass down to a bunch of places so it's easy to get access to that runtime has an interact method on it which is basically a way of sending a message to the runtime that we were talking about before and you just want to make sure to set the type for that interact to the same type as to the same name as the path that you want it to continue down. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm done handling the change for this. Then I will send this interact to say, great, my interaction with this calendar component is done. I can now continue in my voice flow conversation. Cool. So with that set up to render the foo message type, I can head back here and try one last one. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, book appointment. Let's see if it gets it from that. Okay, awesome. And now we go. And we've got the uh, the little React calendar showing up. Um, I personally chose to build my calendar message component using some of the components from our component library. So using the system response dot system message container as well as the message container which means that my uh, calendar gets shown in this nice little bubble. However, you can entirely choose to forego that as with the like uh, the show a video example where it actually shows kind of a full width element, a custom message type. Uh, but now I can, you know, select my date. Great. And it says you're ready to join us for a day of relaxing spa music on 6-15-2023. So I set that variable. Pardon me. I set that variable. 
I continued my conversation and now it has that updated variable that I set with the appropriate date based off of the calendar that I interacted with. Um, let me, what was the, uh, the one to bring up a video? Let me see if I can, I can do that just to quickly show, uh, what that looks like. Maybe it was the FAQ one, which has utterances such as what do you offer? Let's give that a try. <clears throat> Great. So for this one, you can see that, oh, Oh, I turned off I turned off that message type, of course. How silly of me. Let's try that again. Cool. So we can see for this video, we have uh, we're not using any of those, you know, custom uh, or those system message containers. And so as a result, we're able to render it however we choose. And in this uh, this time we chose to render it as kind of a full width um, uh, video so we can use as much space as possible and you know give the user the biggest video when they're watching it in this kind of small format. And it's just using an HTML5 video uh, tag. So super simple to render. Cool. Okay. So that is kind of how uh, custom actions and custom messages work, at least from how we've kind of set up the framework uh, within the demo React chat uh, repo to work.